So, last week I showed you how I built out a Sinnoh Pokedex using the effin' sweet CMS library. I was so excited to discover it and finally dive in and see what it was all about, and learned how great it was with all the filtering capabilities, and I was able to make a great Pokedex using it. And then I realized that effin' sweet recently replaced their CMS library with a whole new one called Attributes. But it's a good thing. This new attribute library is just as powerful as the old CMS one and allows a little more flexibility. I think they were discovering that as they added new features and expanded the old CMS library, it was getting harder to maintain and keep that efficient speed and all that happening. So they released the attribute library to handle all this moving forward, basically reworked the whole structure of it, but it still allows you all of that great capability with filtering and targeting all your CMS items to behave in really cool ways. So I was able to go into my Pokedex and get rid of all of the old CMS library things and just replace them all with the new attribute method of arranging it, and it works just as well. So if you wanna check out that other video where I set up the CMS library first, I'll link to that here. It's just a good way to walk through the structure and the kind of the way I was thinking and building all of this. But if you just wanna see the new attribute library in action, then stay tuned, because that's what we're gonna do. So attributes are basically a way that your elements can communicate with something else. It's similar to CSS, right? How we add certain styling to an element in your Webflow project, and that tells it how to behave, how to look, because we're linking it to a certain styling that's attached to that. An attribute is the same thing. It just lives in the settings of one of your elements, and it'll link it to something else, so it tells it how to behave. And in this case, this is gonna be the attribute JavaScript library that F and Suite puts in place behind the scenes. So you don't need to know the code or any crazy things. All you do is link it together, and this is where all the linking happens happens in the attribute field. And then as long as the right things are matched up, their magic works and your project will look awesome. So in the last video, I wanted to celebrate the release of the new Pokemon games, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And I created this Sinnoh Pokedex and you're able to filter it out by type Clicking on the type filters out just that type or anything that contains that word within the card itself. And then you're able to search directly as well. So if I just searched for one Pokemon, you'll see Garchomp comes right up and the search fields and the buttons themselves are looking for the text fields. They're either looking for one of two types or the name of the Pokemon itself. So those things are what's filtering out by and you can also just reset this so it clears it out. And this was all really easy to walk through because F and Suite has a really great documentation page where they basically have instructions on how to do a million different things. So whatever you're trying to figure out, you'll just go over to this page and they have the options and the instructions on how to do it. So I'm using this filter specifically. So that's what allows the filtering of the Pokemon by type, by name, all that. But they have a ton of other options. They're also expanding and adding more options, I think in the future coming soon. But for now, all I'm using is the filter library, which allows a lot of great things. And it has the basic steps as you go through, you just follow this. And then if you wanna do something specific, you just click the little drop down, and it'll show you where to put the attribute, how to target it, and it has a little visual too, so you can have extra help as you're setting it all up. So this is what I'll be following as I go through. So let's just go step by step. All right, so the first step of using anything with the attribute library is copying the script. So you'll see here, step one on their documentation. This is the script that has the JavaScript information. It links to that library. So as long as this script is in place, you can access it and use all the different commands that allow you all of the different filtering capabilities. So first step would always just to be to copy that. We'll head over to the page settings of where we're working. So this is just all on our home page. And you'll see here, I have it already copied into the head tag of this page. If it's gonna be something that appears on a bunch of different pages throughout your website, head on over to the project settings itself and you can add it in the custom head code there because then it's a global style that'll be accessible to any page. But since this just lives on one page, I'll just put it here. Save that. Great, step one's done. So now you can kind of just go step by step. They kind of list the most important ones in order. So you kind of just go one at a time and you'll be able to link it all up. So the first thing you want to do is target the collection list that you want to filter, right? Because at the end of the day, what we're doing is trying to target a collection list of different items, the Pokemon in this case, and we just want to make sure that we can filter it a certain way. So first thing you have to do is tell the JavaScript library where your collection list is. So I'll copy this name of the attribute and the value will be list. So if I go over here, and I go to Pokemon collection list. So this is the collection list here. You'll see under custom attributes, I went to the settings of this element and I just have that CMS filter dash element and the value is list. 
So this knows this is the CMS list that will be targeted for all the different things that are gonna be happening to it. The next thing I wanna do is have filters. So these sort of act like the triggers, like the buttons that are the types up here that when we click them, it's going to do something to the list that we just targeted. So we're gonna to have to create all these little buttons up here. And you'll see here, this is the Webflow form element that holds all of these. So the example they see here, all of these live inside a form. And inside forms, you can put input elements, you can put checkboxes uh, with the labels, you can do radio buttons, all of those things. So we're gonna have to just add a form into where our buttons are. So I have this buttons wrapper at the top here. I'm gonna press Command K. I'll just do form block. And there we go, we've got a nice form started. And I'll clean it up a bit. So within the form part of the form block, I'll just delete all these. And now I just have this empty form. So our form is in place. These are where the buttons will live. And you'll see here, just the same way we added the attribute to the collection list, we have to add the filters attribute to this. So we have FS CMS filter dash element, click copy, go to the settings of our form, add that, and then the value will be filters. So these are serving as the filters for the collection list. Great, so now we have this parent element that will be holding all the things that will serve as the triggers to target this whole collection list, which is what's being filtered. The next thing it wants us to do is the field identifier. So when I interact within this form we just created, we have to kind of set up those triggers, right? The buttons. You can add a radio button or a checkbox for this example. So similar to the CMS library, if you were familiar with that, you have the option of doing a multi-filter or an exclusive filter. So the one I have in place would be considered exclusive because when I click water, only the water Pokemon show up. And if you, if you go to switch types, it deselects water and switches to steel. So if it was a combination, it would allow you to do water and steel and it would show all those different things happening. This is the same thing like radio and checkboxes, right? So radio button only lets you choose one thing at a time. So that's kind of like exclusive. Whereas a checkbox lets you check multiple things in a form. So that would be allowing, that would return multiple things in the filter. So in this example, I basically have a radio button in place. So instead of using actual buttons, I'm gonna use a radio button, so it only returns one type at a time. So in my form, I will add a radio button, and I'm going to just give it a style of button, because my old project, these are the things I had in place. So I'll jump over to my style guide really quick. And again, if you watched the last video, this was a little more clear, but basically I have a button style for each of the different types, and it has the everything has the class button, which gives it that gray basic formatting. But then if I add the word fire to it, it's a combo class that creates the orange. Grass has a combo class of grass, obviously, and water is water. And then we'll get to the active states in a little bit, but then there's another uh, style indicating what it looks like if the person clicks on it. But basically, I can add the same styling to our uh, radio buttons and it'll look like a button. So we're just using that as the base, but basically cheating it and making it look like the same button. So I'll just do grass and you'll see it already kind of starts to appear like that. I'm gonna get rid of the radio button itself. I can just display none that. And now it actually looks like a button. This will say grass and there we go. So now it looks right, but how does this know if I were to click on this, how it should filter everything, right? So we have to add another attribute just like we added to the form wrapper and the collection list. So if we look here, it's looking for the text fields, right? So inside of each of these cards, Capri, Italy, Capri Island, you have to add attributes to everything that is something that could be filtered by. So in our case, everything that can be filtered by is the name, the first type, and the second type. And you'll see all you have to do is add CMS filter field and give it a value, name. The types, CMS filter field, I'm calling it type. So I'm gonna copy this name here and I'm gonna apply this to my radio button label, the label's important here. So you're doing it on the label element itself. And then the value just has to match the values of what you'd be looking to in the collection list. So in this case, it'll be type. Now all these buttons will have the CMS filter field of type. So it's looking for the type when you click this button. But because it's applied to the text part of the word grass, it's gonna look for the word grass when it filters. So this says type here in the attribute. And then this one has the word type as well. So this is the filter field, and this is the filter field type as well. So those are what's linking up, those two attributes. So that's how it knows how to filter it by grass, or by ground, by fire, all those things. Then when we do the input thing later, that's gonna look to name for the name of the Pokemon itself. So that's why I have this as name. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all the different buttons here, because there's 18 of them, it takes a second. So let me just do that. All right, so all the buttons are in place here. So you'll see here, we've got the radio button label. It has CMS filter field type, 
the fire one, CMS filter field type, water as well, filter field type, and that is what's looking for the other type, which is assigned to the grass, the type here, or the ground, the type here. As long as the two type attributes are corresponding, it doesn't matter what the actual text is, because that's what the text is pulling from these buttons, because it's on the radio button label. So it'll look for grass to only filter grass, look to fire to only filter fire, but it knows which field to compare it to because we added the attributes to match. All right, so now I'm gonna add the input element, and that's what allows us to search for a Pokemon, and it returns that there. So similar process. I'll just target our form and I'll press Command K. I'll add an input. I'll make sure it lives above the buttons. So now this text field, similar to the way we had an attribute linking up this attribute with the grass attribute, when you search in the text field, you wanna search for the name of a Pokemon, right? Just make sure that anything that you're searching for has an attribute on it, because then it can be included in the search you're looking for. And I'll show you what that means in a second here. So if we go back to the documentation, search field, look, this is what we're trying to do. I wanna use a text input field element. We would put the attribute on here, so filter field. Let's just do that first. So that's gonna live right on top of our text field. And then the value could either be a list of things separated by a comma. So we could do name, comma type, and it would just return those things. Say we had other options on the Pokemon, like size, height, those sort of things, but we didn't wanna include that in the search field, then I wouldn't put that in the value. I would just include the size or the, uh, the name and the type. But in our case, there's only three things to look for, so we wanna return everything. And the way we return everything is just with an asterisk. And that's indicated here as well. To search for all CMS fields, use the asterisk. And now we just have to make sure that everything, so I'll save that, everything has an attribute assigned to it. So both the types, this one has filter field type, great, filter field type, and we just have to make sure that our name also has a type, and that's why I added that earlier, CMS filter field name. So again, it doesn't matter what you name this here because the name isn't matching up to anything. If I were writing name as this uh, value field, that would matter, but now it just exists. So now it's gonna be included when we put the asterisk to return all. So let's look at these in place here. I'll just publish this because it's JavaScript and won't appear unless you're in the live browser. All right, so now if I click fire, great, all the fire ones come up, water, all the water ones, perfect. Pick grass, awesome. And if I search for a Pokemon, you'll see that it appears as well because it's pulling to the name field that we gave an attribute to and now it'll return in this input. And when I backspace, it clears it out and shows all of them. There is a little bit of an issue here. If I click water Pokemon, it shows the water, but then if I try to search for um, another Pokemon that's not also a water type, it, it's filtering these things together, right? So it's looking for water Pokemon and this whatever I'm typing, but that doesn't exist. So we're gonna have to add a reset button that clears out the type selection, so it allows you to cleanly look for a new Pokemon in search. We also wanna add the active state, and this is the finished version here that shows that. Just when we click on something, we want that darkened button to appear, right? So I'll show you how to do that. First, let's do those active states. If you go back to the documentation, that you're just curious about things, just keep scrolling until you kind of find what you were thinking about. So look, active class. That's immediately what we wanted to look for, and they already have instructions on how to do that. So it tells you right here, all you'd have to do is add the attribute to the button as well, and then you give it the class name that will make that styling active. I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna click on my grass. And again, this is gonna live on the label attribute. And then my class is called button act. And remember, in our style guide, I have this already in place. So I have grass. This is what our button normally looks like here. And it has button and grass, but then if the button active class is added, it becomes that dark and green color. So when I click that, it's gonna add that class this whole style guide is just a reference because if I didn't have that as a reference, it wouldn't know what button active class does. And I can't just have a single class button active because then everything will look the same, right? This all has to have a reference to know how to look, what base colors to keep, and then just kind of darken the opacity to make it that darker color. So I would just have to go and add this to all of them. Button active. There we go. And I'll just go ahead and add this for all the buttons. Great, so now all of the buttons have that button active class also added. So now if I publish this, fresh our page, click on fire, there we go. Filtering still works, but now when I click, it knows that that active class should be triggered and it knows how the active class looks because I linked it to the same class that I added in that style sheet. So now all of these have a reference and will darken accordingly. 
And then the last thing we're gonna wanna do is just add that reset button so we can clear out what we're searching for. So back here in our form, this can really be any kind of element, but I'm gonna make it a text link. I'm gonna style this really quickly. All right, so there we go. I have this little reset button here. It's just a text link inside of div, so it lives underneath these buttons. So the first thing we need to do is define it as the reset element. Here it says, where are you adding this? You're adding it to an element with this attribute. So first let's do this and the name will be reset. So when I just target the link here, because this text link is serving as our reset um, element. So now it knows that that's what this capability is. That's what this functions as. But we also need to tell it what it's resetting, right? So I'm gonna add another attribute and that's what this one here is. So you must filter reset because we're resetting a filter. And then the value will be the identifier, which is type. Right, and we know that's type because all of these, the filter fields are type. So this whole button block is just resetting the types. So now when I publish this, refresh our page here. So now I have grass, I've got poison, ground. Say I wanted to search for Piplup, who I know is a water type and not a ground type. It's not letting me. All right, that's fine. So now let me just reset the type and there we go. It clears out the selection that I had. You'll see ground goes from active state to no state. And now I can search for Piplup directly and it appears. So reset is a great way to just kind of go back to square one and filter things as you would like instead. So that's the new F and Suite attribute library. And this is just one of many different capabilities that it has. If this seemed a little scatterbrained and confusing to you, watch that other video I did first or check out some of the F and Suite videos. They've got some deep dives into a car project that they did. That's a really great breakdown of how this is all working and linking up together. But if you have an old project that you want to convert to the new attribute library because you use the older CMS version, it doesn't take long at all. This took me just you know a few minutes to work out the kinks and switch out the old class names, add the attributes where they needed to be, but the project still works just fine. And these, again, are just two of the filtering capabilities, but I've used this for a CMS slider as well. I went back to an old client project and I added a CMS slider because that's something that I kind of makeshifted using native Webflow things, but now I was able to do it in a clean, proper way. So attributes, so easy to implement. Just refer to all their documentation if you're confused. They have a lot of great resources. So the new F and Suite attribute library is a great new tool. You should definitely take the time to learn it and implement it into your older projects or any new projects moving forward. It's gonna make things look a lot better, operate a lot smoother, and impress some clients in the future. So until the next video, keep building.